ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. It is Friday, May 5th. Time to kick off your weekend. Let's do it right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. My text line is open this hour, 304-396-TALK. That's 304-396-8255. we got a lot to get into today, but we're going to make time to talk to you as well as we get into the weekend. we got baseball action coming up tonight right here on ESPN, 94.1 and AM 930. Hopefully the Pirates can get back into the winning track, the Pirates lose to Tampa Bay 3 to 2, but the Bucks are home tonight. Weekend series with the Blue Jays. We've got the game 6:35 is going to be first pitch. It's right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 9:30. Yesterday the Guardians and the Reds had the night off. Reds are going to open up a home series with the White Sox tonight at 6:40 and the Guardians host the Twins at 7:10. Dirty Birds Opening up a series at Southern Maryland tonight, 635. Dirty Birds are now 1-3 on the season. They're going to be happy to get home finally. I know we've got baseball this weekend, the Thundering Herd. One more go at the ballpark. We'll see how the Thundering Herd does. They've got a series with James Madison opening tonight at 6 o'clock. So we'll take a look at all of that and, of course, get your phone calls in. 304-396-TALK. That's our number to be a part of our text line. 304-396-8255. I think I want to start with some good news today. Tavion Kinsey invited to the NBA G League Elite Camp. So that's pretty good. It's May 13th and May 14th in Chicago. So the G League Camp is is an opportunity for players who were not invited to the NBA draft combine to showcase their skills in front of NBA scouts and executives. I think Kenzie has earned his way there. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we were looking at 22.1 points this season, almost five rebounds this season a game, and over five assists a contest. And he was shooting well over 50%, and he was shooting over 40% from the three-point line. So Kenzie, I think, has earned his shot. He's got a legitimate shot to make the league. I don't know if it's through the draft or picked up as a free agent, but I think he's got a legitimate shot here. And he's got a chance to showcase himself in the G League, and that's what that's all about. I'm surprised we're not going to get to the point where, and maybe with name, image, and likeness now, it's not going to go this way, but I'm surprised that the the NBA doesn't, have more of a direct path to the league, bypassing college. And, of course, why would you bypass college? It's a great farm system for the NBA. The same way that football in the college ranks, a great farm system for the NFL. I mean, with baseball, you've got different opportunities. You've got minor league baseball. You've got college baseball. There are different paths. Same thing with hockey and different sports. You've got versatile you have versatility so many opportunities so i'm curious to see how this works out so we'll be following tavion uh with the g league may 13th and 14th that's coming up for him so i'm excited for him it'll look good have a martial player taking a prominent role being visible in the nba you know how it works. Somebody somewhere will see Tavion Kinsey, and that will be their favorite player. And they will know that he went to Marshall, and then now they'll know about Marshall. And you never know if enough kids become fans of Tavion Kinsey. You might have a Marshall player in the future coming from that alone, right? How many players when Randy Moss – I know with Chad being a great quarterback, with Byron Leftwich being a great quarterback, you know that attracted some younger quarterbacks, I'm sure. But with Randy Moss just blowing through the NFL, being such a iconic player in the college ranks as well, how many kids got into college football because of Randy Moss? More importantly, how many kids knew of Marshall because of Randy Moss? And I think the number's probably pretty high. Now, as of late, you don't have those iconic names 
that you can point to and say, Randy Moss, oh, that's Marshall. I think more people still can say Randy Moss, Marshall. A lot of people, especially fans of the Jets, they know all about Chad Pennington. He's still probably one of the fan base's favorite quarterbacks. I think that's fair to say. And so I hope Tavion becomes somebody's favorite as he gets the opportunity to show himself. And yeah, I don't want to see I don't want to see Tavion Kinsey anytime soon in the TBT. All right. Let's just go ahead and put that out there right now. I mean, I think it'd be great if Tavion was in the TBT, but let's not see him there anytime soon. You could see Tavion and heard that maybe making an impact. I don't know. Maybe in the future, sure, get him on there. But I hope it's a long time from now that we're even entertaining that conversation of Tavion Kinsey going to the TBT, playing for heard that. It's a fun conversation to have, though. I would absolutely love to see it. John, Tavion, who else could we get back? I think Tavion would be the biggest free agent acquisition for the TBT, but we got bigger things to, to deal with first. We got the NBA G League Elite Camp. We've got the draft coming up. We have got the NBA still going on right now. Golden State beating up the Lakers 127 100. Series is tied at one game apiece. Boston's at Philadelphia tonight, 7 30. That series tied at one game apiece. And Denver's at Phoenix at 10 tonight. The Nuggets have a 2-0 lead in that series. If you've been following the Stanley Cup playoffs, Florida beat Toronto 3-2, so the Panthers lead that series two games to none. I never would have seen that coming. Dallas gets back into the fight, beating Seattle 4-2, so that series is tied at one game apiece. And tonight, 8 o'clock, game two, it's going to be New Jersey at Carolina. Carolina leads that series one game to none. We've got softball to update you on. Thundering Herd getting its 900th program win. Impressive. 41st regular season win. Also impressive. Spring Valley won a title. We'll talk about that. We'll get your phone calls in on our text line, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. We'll do it when we continue. Text line open till the end of the show here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Our text line this hour is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Welcome back to The Drive on ESPN 94.1 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan, here until 6 o'clock this evening. So the Thundering Herd on the softball field has started to reign supreme. They've got an opportunity to win the Sunbelt Conference Championship. But right now, Marshall is sitting pretty. 900th program win and a record 41st regular season win with a 4 nothing win over Georgia Southern. That's huge. 900 wins. There are not too many programs that can say that they have 900 wins. Sydney Nestor, once again, outstanding through a complete game shutout. She allowed just three hits with five strikeouts. Now, this is the most, 41 wins, the most regular season wins in the program's 30-year history. The program's been around 30 years, and Marshall has 900 wins, and this is the program's first 41-win season. And Sydney Nestor has been racking up the wins as well, her 24th win of the year. That is also tied for the league lead. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with the softball team. So what does 900 program wins mean? Consistency. That's what it means. You can look at in the eyes of a recruit and say, you know, we've won. We've been around 30 years for this program, and we've won 900 games. We're consistent. We're winners. And now and then, we also have a legitimate shot at winning a conference championship, getting to the NCAA, and then you make the pitch, and with your help, we can get there. Still, it's been a good showing so far. Marshall Softball has come in and shown the Sun Belt that, hey, We're not here to play. We're here to compete. 
And it's not going to be easy getting past Marshall. Just ask Georgia Southern that. And on top of that, Sidney Nestor has had a major impact on this team. 24th win of the year. She's bringing leadership. She's bringing experience. And the thing about Marshall has been over the last few years is they believe in the team concept, so it's not just on Sydney Nestor's shoulders. She's not just winning games for this team and not getting any support. I think she's had run support. She's had good defensive play behind her. Sydney Nestor has definitely led the way for the Thundering Herd. She's a leader on this team, but at the same time, I think that the team concept is showed as of late for this team. So what's going to happen here? You think Marshall can sweep this series? Georgia Southern needs a win, and Marshall's trying to lock itself up into, I think the way this works here, and this is going to be new for, for us, following softball over the years, this is going to be new for us. I think Marshall pretty much has locked up the two seed in the tournament. It's different in this tournament instead of, I mean, Louisiana's the top team. Let's just go ahead and say that. Louisiana's a top team, but you know, Marshall's put itself in a position that it will face Louisiana if everything holds chalk at the end. And I think that's what you want. You want the two best teams in the league, and I think Marshall is among the two best teams, top two, top three, whatever you want to say. I think Marshall is among the leaders in the Sun Belt, and I think if you want to put your best foot forward in this league, you want to showcase the two best teams. Now, the thing I like what Louisiana does, uh, I hope to see Marshall do more, and I don't think it's an issue. Marshall's not ducking anyone. Marshall will play tough competition. Marshall playing Alabama, for an example. I'd like to see Marshall play maybe a tougher non-conference schedule if possible. I'd like to see more of a challenging schedule. I don't want to say just load up with power fives. You want to you want to put games on the schedule that makes sense. But I want to see Marshall definitely amp up the schedule a little bit. Let's get some respect for this th- softball team. And honestly, if Alabama will come to Huntington, I think other teams would come as well. And you could go back and forth. This isn't a situation where you ask Alabama to come to Huntington to play football. I would make that ask, but it's not where you make that ask and they look at you like, really? No, this is softball where – if you expand the facility a little bit more, I think you can have some good crowds here. And we had someone text in last week asking, hey, what are they doing with those bleachers, those those seats from the football stadium that they're going to be taking down the end zone? What are they going to do with those? And someone suggested, hey, why don't you take those over either in a temporary basis or, or maybe a more permanent basis, take those over to the softball field? And I thought, hey, that's a good idea. And if we talk about it a few times, somebody's going to hear about it, and maybe they'll go, hey, that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, I don't know what the master plan is as far as expanding seating capacity at the dot, but what has to happen is you got to consistently show up at the dot. You can't have these one-offs where you can bring temporary seating in. That's fine. Like in Alabama, you have that as a one-off. Under 4,000 show up. Great crowd, great atmosphere. Now, can you bring in – on a consistent basis, what is a thousand fair? Is a thousand maybe two thousand? What's a good solid consistent number for softball to to help propel that forward? Honestly, what's a good number? What's a good number to be able to say, hey, this is what we do. Look how many people show up. Get some bigger names in to Huntington. Create more of an event atmosphere every time softball's on the field. What does it need? as far as seating capacity. And someone said to me, hey, a thousand minimum. It's got to be a thousand minimum. Maybe that's the case. Maybe you need a thousand. Maybe you need you two thousand. Maybe you need under that. And I hope with the baseball park going up and you see the construction continuing, that softball is going to benefit from you know things that are going to be attached with that. And so there are a lot of options here to make the dot a friendly venue, seat more. I think you have to have more concessions. Obviously, that's going to be important, more concessions. Things like that, quality of life issues here. I think bathrooms, restrooms are important. I think more concessions are important. I'm just spending everybody's money, aren't I? On a, on a Friday, I'm, just, I'm writing checks. I'm just cashing them for things I want. But I think that's what you need to do to really get the, the program elevated even higher. 
closing the gap, right? Well, as far as the win-loss column is concerned, Marshall's pretty good. Facility-wise, I haven't seen all the facilities in the Sun Belt, but you know, there's always room for improvement. You want to give your team the best you can possibly give. You want to be competitive. You don't want to be the team that's always trying to play catch-up in conference. You want to be a team that's right there on par, minimum on par. You want to be, well, if they have that, we should have that. And then you have it. You don't want to always have this big wish list of things you need just to catch up. You want to be able to to add. Like, okay, we we can do this and make us better. They don't have that yet. We can put this together. I think softball will definitely benefit over the next few years here as, you know, we've seen a lot of facility upgrades already, and hopefully that will continue. I'd like to see a lot more for softball. And, you know, they've been one of those programs that year in and year out have been one of the more consistent winners for the Thundering Herd. This could be the team. I still think this is the team. This is Marshall's best shot right now of winning a conference championship. That's a softball team. Tennis came close. Basketball had a shot. Basketball had a shot. Didn't get it done. Had two shots, actually. Had a shot at it with the regular season. And then had a shot in the tournament. Didn't get it done. Tennis made a run, so I thought maybe John Mercer's team could make that happen. But I think softball's where it's at right now legitimately. If I was putting money on it right now, if I was going to Vegas and putting my money down where my mouth was, I would say, hey, softball's going to win this thing. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. That's our text line to be a part of today's edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We'll get you caught up on what's happening across across the baseball world thundering herd in action hopefully marshall can get some wins before the regular season's over we'll talk about it when we continue on this edition of the drive espn 94.1 and am 930 this is the drive with paul swan on espn 94.1 fm and am 930 our text line is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Let's go back to our text line. This is going to fire some people up. It's Friday. Let's do it. Let's settle the debate, Paul. Will Kenzie get drafted? We're talking, of course, about Tavion Kenzie. He was invited to the NBA G League Elite Camp. Again, the G League Elite Camp is an opportunity for players who were not invited to the NBA Draft Combine to showcase their skills in front of NBA scouts and executives. My gut reaction is if he gets drafted, he's going to be a late round, he's going to be a late second rounder if he gets drafted because it's so hard to get drafted. And Kenzie's got an opportunity here to really showcase himself, really take advantage of, of the opportunity at the camp to stand out, maybe give an executive and a scout maybe a reason to, all right, let's think about him a little bit more, how well he performs, how well he impresses the scouts. All of those things are going to play into whether he's going to get drafted or not. My feeling is he might get picked up toward the end. I'm not ready to say definitively, oh, yeah, he's getting drafted. And at the same time, I'm not going to say he's not going to get drafted because, again, I like the guy. I'm I'm not saying he's not getting drafted, but that's not the answer you're looking for. So I will – I'll crowdsource this. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. I haven't seen him on any draft boards. Just looking at draft boards, where players are coming and going, is he a prospect? Yes. Is he – a well-regarded prospect, yes, because, again, he got invited to the NBA G League Elite Camp. So somebody thinks he's got something. They want to see more of it. Is he going to go on draft day? That's a tough one for me because it's so hard. What's working for him? Talented player, personality, charisma, good shot, very talented. Yes, he's he's got the tools. He's got the personality. He could be someone that could stand out. Be your favorite player. He could be somebody. I'm thinking he might be looked at seriously, and if he's picked up, somebody's taking a 
a fly on him, thinking, okay, what do we have to lose? Let's get him. Because you get two rounds in the NBA draft. This isn't like the NFL draft where you have a multitude of rounds. And don't forget, you get got compensatory draft picks. You have everything that goes into it. And it's very hard to get drafted in the NFL because there's so many players. The same here as the NBA, but you have two rounds in the NBA. You have multiple rounds in the NFL. Basketball is a little different. If you can play, you can play. You don't necessarily have to come from a Power 5 school to get drafted in the NBA. And so Tavion's got a legitimate shot here. But he's going to have to show up, and he's going to have to perform well, I think, at the camp just to create a little bit more buzz for him. And then maybe people will start talking about it. And honestly, I don't know if anybody's got a correct draft board to believe what is being said about him. There's a lot of positive being said about him. But if you look at the draft boards and you're looking at people who are analyzing this, thinking that they know what teams need and, and what teams are going to do, you know, I haven't seen him really up there on anything. So I'm hoping he does get drafted. I know that doesn't settle the debate. You want me to say, yes, he gets drafted, or no, he doesn't. I, I know what you're trying to do, and it's okay. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Yeah, if I say yes, I'm – so yes is a safe answer because if he doesn't get drafted, oh, that's too bad, Tavion. I hate that. See, I can be sympathetic. If I say, no, he's not going to get drafted, and then he gets drafted – you dunk on me. You throw that in my face. Or if I say he doesn't get drafted and he doesn't get drafted, I'm negative. I don't win. I can't win with this particular one. If it was any other player, I could say yes or no. Tavion, he's got a good shot. One more time, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. We've got baseball coming up this weekend for the Thundering Herd. Marshall opening up a weekend home Sunbelt Conference Series. 6 o'clock at Go Mart Ballpark, facing off against James Madison. Games are also set for Saturday at 3 and Sunday at 1 o'clock. Sunbelt has been a tough league for the Thundering Herd so far. And there's only four games separating the first place team and the five teams uh, that are, are vying for the final spot in the tournament. That's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Coastal Carolina ranked number seven with a 15 and six league record leading the conference. Southern Miss is 14 and seven in league. Troy is 11 and 10, ranked second and third in conference. Texas State, the reigning Sun Belt regular season champions, they are looking pretty good. They're looking pretty good right now. They've won 10 of their last 13 games. So. They are coming up strong. This has been a good league for Marshall. I'm hoping that once the baseball park is built, once that you eliminate the, okay, we don't have a facility to, to, to recruit to, you can eliminate that. You have a facility to recruit to now. It's all on coaching, transfer portal. It's all on getting people excited for this program, people showing up to watch Marshall baseball, selling the program, Marshall then scheduling, uh, hopefully an exciting schedule, get people coming out and watch the herd play. That's what I would like to see. I think you've got what WVU is going to come in here in the future because, again, you have a coach who gets it, and Randy Mazey, coach that gets it, likes to play Marshall, wants to see baseball do well in the state of West Virginia. I know for some of you, yeah, you absolutely hate WVU, and for others of you, you know who you are. You absolutely hate Marshall, and I see both of you. I see both of you groups right now. I think with really good baseball in Morgantown and hopefully Marshall with a program that can become really good, I think that's going to do wonders for baseball in the state of West Virginia. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Before we hit the break, I've got to mention uh, congratulations to the Spring Valley Timberwolves winning the MSAC title with a 2-1 victory over Hurricane. Spring Valley had to go through Cabell Midland to get to the final and then beat a really good Hurricane Redskins team. This is going to be a possible serious run, I think, for Spring Valley. I think this sets up a nice run for Spring Valley. Just to beat Hurricane, win the Mountain State Athletic Conference title, 
that's going to set up the Timberwolves quite nicely. So hopefully they'll be able to make a run. We wish them the best of luck, congratulating them for their Mountain State Athletic Conference title. Final segment coming up. We'll get your text in, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. This is The Drive on ESPN, 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN, 94.1 FM and AM 930. It's our final segment of today's edition of The Drive on ESPN, 94.1 and AM 930. Our text line is 304-396-TALK, 304 396 8255. Reminder, we've got baseball action coming up tonight. The 635 first pitch, the Pittsburgh Pirates opening up a weekend series with the Blue Jays. You can catch that game here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So how many of you are excited? I know I said I wouldn't talk about it. But I guess I'm going to have to. How many of you are excited for the Kentucky Derby coming up this weekend? Saturday in Louisville, Churchill Downs. I'm going to be somewhere on Saturday where they're going to be watching this thing. And I'm going to have to watch it. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't watch the Kentucky Derby. Only when we had the hopes of a a legitimate triple crown, I tuned in, watched a little bit of it. Because I wanted to see that. But... As it stands, I am not into this. All I know is Tappet Trice has the best odds at 5-1 to one and has a legitimate shot of winning. And Tappet Trice has a winning streak of three races, including the Bluegrass Stakes, Tampa Bay Derby, and Allowance Gulf Stream. I did a little research today for this. I did a little research today. So the top six teams here that I, as as I know it, and for you horse aficionados who follow this, Hit Show with 30 to 1, Verifying with 15 to 1, Two Fills 12 to 1, Confidence Game 20 to 1, Tap It Trice 5 to 1, and Kings Barnes 12 to 1. So if you're looking for my pick, now I'm not going to go and pick this. But if you want to, go ahead. Put it down on Tap It Trice. Just put it down. Tap It Trice is going to win the Kentucky Derby. And then when it happens on Monday, we're going to come back here, and I'm going to proclaim myself. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, and put it part of my resume. Kentucky Derby expert with about, I think, 15, 20 minutes of, of not even serious research on this one. But – I felt that I needed to know a little bit, just enough, so I can talk about the Kentucky Derby because I'm going to be somewhere on Saturday where they're going to be talking about the Kentucky Derby because it's going to be on, and I won't be able to get away from it. So I'll have to talk about the Kentucky Derby. I've been My hand is forced. I won't be able to get out of it. So, oh, yeah, Tap It Trice. Yeah, I think Tap It Trice has got a legitimate shot here. Definitely. Yeah, three game, three games. See, I got to clean up. I got to clean that up, too. Oh, yeah, winning streak at three races, won the Bluegrass Stakes. Yes, It's hard to win the Tampa Bay Derby. And you know, winning the Allowance Gulf Stream, I think Tabit Trice is the horse to beat. Who do you think's going to win? Oh, you you like Hit Show. Oh, yeah, Hit Show's pretty good. Yeah, Small Talk is me prepping for Small Talk on Saturday, talking about the Kentucky Derby because it's going to be on in the – in the room that I'm going to be in for a while. It's going to be on. People are going to be watching it, and people will have mint juleps. You know, and I hope I don't see any stupid hats. Absolutely hate the fact that I might see the stupid hats. I get it. You go to the Kentucky Derby. You're you're there to be seen. You're there to show off. How many people are there for the horse race, and how many people are there for the pageantry, the showing off, the hats? The mint juleps. How many people are there for that part of the race? And don't get me wrong. I like horses. It's just, we'll race anything, won't we? We will absolutely race anything. If it goes around the circle, we'll race it. NASCAR Kansas this weekend on Big Buck Country 101.5. The truck race, Heart of America 200 Saturday at 8. Cup, the Advent Health 400 Sunday at 3. And also... 
according to my notes, Formula One at Miami, Crypto.com, Miami Grand Prix, Sunday at 3.30. Speaking of racing, Churchill Downs suspended trainer uh, Safi Joseph Jr. indefinitely, and Lord Miles, who is trained by Joseph, scratched from the Kentucky Derby days after the sudden death of two of his horses at the track. Also, practical move was scratched from the Derby with a high temperature. So there you go. I, I know everything I need to know for the Derby on Saturday. Our text line is always 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Welcome back to this Friday edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1. And AM 930, you can always find me after hours if you're listening to the show on the podcast. You can find me on Twitter at Paul Swan. And, of course, speaking of the podcast, if there's forever a reason that you can't listen live and you want to catch up on what you missed, you can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. And it's totally free. It's a free subscription. So hit that subscription button, like button, follow button, whatever it is on your podcast service to have the drive with Paul Swan, yours truly, delivered to your device every single day a new episode is posted. And you know what? I think that's going to do it for this show today. I think we've gotten everything in place. Don't forget, baseball coming up here in a short bit with the Pirates trying to bounce back, losing four, can they get it done, get back on the winning track? They cooled off a little bit, but they've got the Blue Jays coming up. 635 is going to be first pitch on that one, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So looking forward to that one. And let's hope that Marshall Softball gets the win on the road, and let's hope that Marshall Baseball can get some wins this weekend, opening up that weekend home Sun Belt Series, starting with James Madison at – Go Mart Ballpark, that is coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. Game set for Saturday at 3, Sunday at 1. You've got a lot of baseball action to follow. And with that said, that's going to do it for this edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We'll be back with you on Monday. We've got plenty of guests that are tentatively booked for next week, so I'm looking forward to, to getting back with a few of the coaches over at Marshall. And you never know what else we're going to come up with. So we'll see you on Monday. Until then, have a great weekend, everyone.